All right, Gator, I'm going to give you some of the pairings that people took as they worked our way through this two-round mock where you get to play Lions GM. Yeah. It's an exercise <clears throat> in a possible scenario and decisions you'll have to make, and Gator was struggling with the pick at 29, given <laughs> who's left on the board. The two guys there, man. Uh, Corey in Cincinnati took Jackson Powers Johnson, the center or interior offensive lineman from Oregon at 29, and Cam Hart, the corner from Notre Dame in the second round. Max in Bath, Michigan, with Jackson Powers Johnson at 29. Rebuild strength for the long term. Pick 61, Cam Hart, need corner help, but can serve in a reserve for a bit. But can serve as a reserve for a bit. Uh, from Bill Madison Heights, he goes cornerback Cooper DeGene at 29. Defensive end Braylon Trice at 61. On name Texer goes Cooper DeGene, cornerback Iowa at 29. Braylon Trice, defensive end Washington, 61. On name Texer goes first round Cooper DeGene all day long. He's two players in one because he also solves a return game. Second round at 61, doubling up on defensive backs with the safety Tyler Newbin. Steven St. Clair Shores, first round Cooper DeGene. Second round, Braylon Trice. Uh, Max T and Mount Clemens says Cooper DeGene at 29 and Tyler Newbin, safety Minnesota, at 61. Gator, who are you? T- who who were your two? Who are the two you're struggling with at 29? Oh, the pick is in. No, it's not yet. Who are the two you're struggling with? The two I was struggling with was the aforementioned Cooper DeGene, mm-hmm. uh, who I believe it's April 8th that he'll be working out at a pro day, and everybody's going to be watching to see what he does there, he's healthy, his 40 time I think will be key. Um, and the other one was uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, the mm-hmm. offensive lineman, interior offensive lineman. But you had to make a decision. Is I had pick to make in? a decision, and, and the pick is in. Okay. With the 29th selection in the 2024 NFL draft, the Detroit Lions select interior offensive lineman Jackson Powers Johnson. Okay. Kang, is your pick in? Yeah, my pick is in. Give me the white athlete from Iowa, Caitlin Clark. I mean, Cooper DeGene. <laughs> I'm, go- I'm going Cooper DeGene. Uh, when healthy, of course, hopefully he's healthy. Uh, you know, really good defensive back. Very, very good return skills. Yeah. I mean, I was torn. really torn on that one. They got so many cornerbacks and defensive backs right, right now with one-year deals. I think you got to get a young guy in there with a rookie contract. I like Cooper DeGene. I don't disagree with that. That's a, a valid point about how many one year contracts they have. But but Jackson Powers Johnson feels like I mean, there's no such thing as a sure thing, but he feels like a one of those picks that you basically know you're gonna have him playing for you in the interior offensive line and playing well for a long time. Yeah. Okay. So we worked our way through the second round. Uh on the board. Tavondre Sweat, defensive tackle from Texas. Braylon Trice, defensive end from Washington. Tyler Newbin, safety from Minnesota. Cam Hart, cornerback, Notre Dame. Jalen Polk, wide receiver, Washington. Theo Johnson, tight end, Penn State. Out of those, I said those were the one of those was the pick. But do you? Uh... I, I I wrote down one of those names, but I would have gone off the board. I and this was my thinking after the fir- with the first round, right when I was torn between. Jackson Powers Johnson to Cooper DeGene. I went with Jackson Powers Johnson because I thought that I would get Mike Sainristel in the second round. Okay. And I would have taken Mike Sainristel. But because of the names you mentioned, I said Braylon Trice. All right. Defensive end from Washington. Kang, who was your pick in the second round? I went with the Washington player as well. Jalen Polk, though, receiver. I think uh, with the loss of Josh Reynolds, and I know there's a rumor of Tyler Boyd, but until they do find a – a replacement and add some depth. I know they brought back DPJ. They got Antoine Green. I like Jalen Polk. Okay. Well, uh, working our way through field dates. Two rounder with trades. At 29, the Detroit the pick is in. At 29, the Detroit Lions select Cooper DeGene, cornerback, Iowa. I ain't mad at it. And here's what he writes. Cornerback is always is already a priority for Detroit prior to the release of Cam Sutton and amid the allegations of domestic battery. And now feels like an early must-have in the draft. The Jean would join former Iowa teammates uh, Jack Campbell and Sam Laporta. He's springy with exceptional man coverage skills on the ball production. Seven interceptions the past two years. GM Brad Holmes and coach Dan Campbell will surely be do- drawn to DeGene's toughness, willingness as a tackler, two traits, that also lead evaluators to think he could be the best safety in the class if moved to that spot, but I view him as a corner and a really good one. Okay, so Cooper DeGene's the pick, and the pick at 61. That pick is in. 
The Detroit Lions select Jalen Polk, wide receiver, Washington. The Lions could certainly certainly consider an edge defender at this point, but the overall depth at the position is not great. Receiver feels like a potential hole opposite of Amon Ra, especially after Josh Reynolds signed with Denver. Polk isn't a burner, 4-5-3 in the 40 at the combine, but he has excellent catch radius and is tough. He finished 2023 with 1,159 yards. Okay. So I think a couple things have happened in the last two weeks that could change the Detroit Lions' overall approach to how they build a football team. They didn't expect that they were going to have to release Cam Sutton. And they very much wanted to bring back Josh Reynolds. The fact that those two things happened, I don't know that between now and draft time, they're going to be able to fill those holes. A couple weeks ago, they thought they had Cam Sutton as CB2. I'm, I'm assuming Carlton Davis is CB1. And Roberts, Amik Robertson and Emmanuel Mosley pushing Cam Sutton. Cam Sutton's out. Now they have a hole there that I'm not sure they're going to be able to fill before the draft. Two is, I mean, they came out and admitted that they wanted Josh Reynolds back. And that was a priority. And they were hoping to get it done. Now that it's not done, and now that Cam Sutton's gone, I think they're not going to be able to go into the draft with a complete football team. This could push the boundaries of their steadfast best player available beliefs because of recent, what I would describe as unforeseen events. They did not know that they were going to lose a starting corner and they didn't know they were going to lose a starting wide receiver. Uh, No, um, but they still had options in free agency to do something about it if they, if they wanted to. Um, I think the, it's interesting that the wide receiver from, from Washington, is he the second best or third best receiver on that team? Because McMillan's the other one. Yeah, I think he was the second best. Both, Although I think he's the first one off the board in this mock. They're both pretty good. Yeah. They're both pretty good receivers. I mean, it's intriguing, but um, yeah, I, I just, I tend to look at, I, I think offensive line and corner and defensive line, those are the areas that I want to address with the first two picks, uh, mm-hmm. one, you know, whatever combination you want to use. And, and wide receiver would not be one of those. Yeah. Adunze is the best. Yeah, with by far. Yeah. And then it's McMillan and Polk. The thing about them is that they're, <laughs> you know, sometimes it's like, which do you prefer, slot receiver, outside receiver? These guys are almost the exact same size. 